Hey guys, Budcat7 here. Okay, it is Thursday, November 4th, 2021, and I'd like to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. I really do appreciate it. Okay, guys, well, it's cold outside, real cold. We got in blast of arctic air down here in new york on long island here it's absolutely freezing outside and uh until your core temperature sort of regulates with the average cold temperatures you're not really used to it yet you know your core body temperature has to drop a degree or two or whatever it is before it really adjusts Correct, like a half a degree or something like that. it's in minute amounts but anybody who lives in the mountain areas of the world can tell you all about it but talking about cold and speaking about cold uh we are going to talk about legends of giants in denmark and it's very interesting the various connections that can be made just by looking at you know some of these legends and myths of giants and the different related material involved with it and what it really gives you a whole picture actually of, of what's really going on so we're gonna take a look at one of these um legends from Denmark here and it really is like the beginnings of the history of Denmark so you know you have to take this into consideration this is the legend or myth of Gorm the Old but is it really a myth or legend they're not even sure so let's take a look at this here because it's just fascinating what can really be gained out of looking at these things and after putting the various parts together you get a better picture of what's going on and what's being reported here because you have to think about it you know this is like the origination of Denmark coming from the history of this Gorm the Old character from their past and so it's this is a story that's very import, important to them so the truth may be stretched here or there or you know certain assumptions could be made but whatever it is but you know it's not it's going to be a biased reporting of what's going on most likely so just to show you what i'm talking about here from this list just to show you this list here given by wikipedia list of giants in mythology and folklore just to get it straight okay so this lists various different cultures of the past and you know i've gone through these all and you know most of them are sort of personifications of you know astral bodies and things going on and there are very few which actually have to do with actual historical figures and related stuff that is you know at least you know exists so we can look at the related material involved with the history of these things but there's very few of them most of them are just you know anthropomorphized characters of you know the solar deities and you know planets etc so you know those i'm not really concerned with i'm more concerned with these ones I'm, I'm trying to cherry pick out of here that have more to do with actual historical figures and what's being said here and what what about it all so let's take a look at this myth or legend of this person from uh Wikipedia here from Norse mythology called Gorm the Old or Gorm the Languid, <laughs> which 
you know, sort of suggest something about this person, which may be going on, something that we can understand about it, that perhaps these people are missing. And, you know, now that we have a under, better understanding of the giants from the research done on this channel here, you know, we have a better perspective on the historical occurrence of the giants around the world. So let's take a look at this and see about the related things and see what we can get out of it. <clears throat> but it's, certainly it's very interesting the way it's presented and, you know, what what is really being said. So this is the legend or myth of Gorm the Old, also called Gorm the Languid, <laughs> right here, and uh, was ruler of Denmark, reigning from 936 to his death in 958, or a few years later. He ruled from Gelling and made the oldest of the Gelling stones in honor of his wife, Thyra. Gorm was born before 900 and died perhaps around 958 or possibly 963 or 64 or take your pick. They don't know if this is even from the time period they're talking about. Anything from this far in the past is really should be scrutinized heavily. So, Ancestry and Rain. Gorm is the reported son of semi-legend. Get what's being said here, okay? So, he's the reported son of semi-legendary Danish king, Harth Eknut. So, this is the semi-legendary king. So... <laughs> What's semi-legendary? I like these terms that they make up here, which are just, you know, seem rather dubious. Semi-legendary. Is, is it a legend or not? I mean, you know, can, can you make up your mind? I guess they can't. That's the whole thing. Chronicler Adam of Bremen says that Harthaknut came from Northmania. Northmania to Denmark and seized power in the early 10th century. He deposed the young king Sigtrig Nupeson, reigning over western Denmark. When Harthekne died, Gorm ascended the throne. Hemskringler reports Gorm taking at least part of the kingdom by force from Nupa and Adam himself suggests that the kingdom had been divided prior to Gorm's time. Gorm is first mentioned as the host of Archbishop Uni of Hamburg and Bremen in 936. According to the Gelling Stones, Gorm's son, Harold Bluetooth, it's kind of funny, Bluetooth speaker, Harold Bluetooth speaker, won all of Denmark. So it is speculated that Gorm only ruled Jutland from his seat in Gelling. <laughs> Marriage to Thyra. Gorm married Thyra, who is given conflicting and chronologically dubious parentage by late sources, but no contemporary indication of her parentage survives. Gorm raised one of the three gr great burial mounds at Gelling, as well as the oldest of the Gelling stones, for her, calling her Tanmarker Butt. <laughs> Denmark's salvation or Denmark's adornment, Tan Tanmarker Markar Butt. Gorm was the father of three sons, Tok, Newt, and Harold, later King Harold Bluetooth Speaker. <laughs> His wife, Thyra, is credited with the completion of the Dan Danverk, Danverk, a wall between Denmark's southern border and its unfriendly Saxon neighbors to the south. The wall was not new, but it was expanded with a ditch and earthen foundation topped by a timber stockade above it. The Danverk ran between the Schlei and the Tween River across what is now Schleswig. Death, burial, and reburial. 
One theory is that Gorm died in the winter of 958-959. This is based on dendrochronology that shows that the burial chamber in the northern burial mound in Jelling was made from wood timbers felled in 958. Harold Hutfeld relates one legend of his death in Denmark's Ridges Chronic. The three sons were Vikings in the truest sense, departing Denmark each summer to raid and pillage. Harold came back to the royal enclosure at Jelling with the news that his brother, Canute, had been killed in an attempt to capture Dublin, Ireland. Canute was shot with a coward's arrow while watching some games at night. No one would tell the king in view of the oath the king had made. Queen Thyra ordered the royal hall hung with black cloth and that no one was to say a single word. When Gorm entered the hall, he was astonished and asked what the mourning colors meant. King, Queen Thyra spoke up. Lord King, you had two falcons, one white and the other gray. The white one flew far afield and was set upon by other birds which tore off its beautiful feathers and is now useless to you. Meanwhile, the gray falcon continues to catch fowl for the king's table. Gorm understood immediately the queen's metaphor and cried out, My son is surely dead since all of Denmark mourns. You have said it, your majesty. Thyra announced, not I, but what you have said is true. According to the story, Gorm was so grieved by Canute's death that he died the following day. This account would contradict information on the gelling stones, which, point to, which points to Queen Thyra dying before Gorm. Some archaeologists and historians have suggested that Gorm was buried first in Queen Thyra's grave mound at Jelling, and later moved by his son, Harold Bluetooth, into the original wooden church in Jelling. According to this theory, it is believed that the skeleton found at the site of the first Christian church of Jelling is in fact Gorm the Old, though the theory is still much debated. During the reign of Gorm, most Danes still worshipped the Norse gods, but during the reign of Gorm's son, Harold Bluetooth, Denmark officially converted to Christianity. Harold accordingly left the hill where Gorm had originally been interred as a memorial. Legacy Gorm was quote unquote old in the sense that he was considered the traditional ancestral quote-unquote head of the Danish monarchy. Saxo Grammaticus in the Gesta Danorum asserts that Gorm was older than other monarchs and having lived so long was blind by the time his son Canute was killed. So that's the story of Gorm here. But I have a bunch of issues with this thing here, or at least certain observations that should be pointed out while attempting to understand this thing here. Okay, again, this is not some personification of some astral body or something like that. It's just talking about historical figures. In fact, something that's really traditionally important to the Danish people themselves would have a lot to do with their history. Okay, um, so first of all, one thing you got to know is that I don't know where they're taking this from exactly here when they're giving this search result in Google here, but it's something is mentioned above in whatever article this is here. But I'm not I don't need to go to it. As mentioned above, the Danes are the tallest people in Scandinavia, with an average height of around five foot eleven inches for men and five foot six inches for women. And the average height worldwide is a little less than 5'8". You know, it's 5.79 inches. Okay, so these people are unusually tall. And again, they don't know why. Okay, as affirmed by, you know, research on this channel with the history of height and growth, but also 
when we went over the Frisian Giants last Christmas, the previous Christmas, okay, about the Frisian Giants, okay, so this is where, here's Denmark, okay, and here is where the Frisian Giants are in the north of Germany and Holland here that we talked about. That in the article that I read on the video on his channel about the Frisian Giants, okay, they don't know why they're so tall. They don't know why they're so tall, but see, we do, you see, because the people there have the genes of the giants in them. It's real easy to understand, okay? Why would it be the tallest people in Scandinavia are the Danes? Well, because of all these stories of giants coming from these areas and people who actually exist there today the frisians okay where a guy like me who's five eight walks into a bar and the bar is up to my neck and i walk into the bathroom and the urinal is halfway up the wall with these frisian people who just happen to have kind of odd looking skulls for some reason Okay, all right. Okay, you getting a bit of the picture here? All right. Here's Denmark. Here's where the Frisians are. Here's where Legends of Giants are. Here's where actual giants are. Okay, so in any case, <clears throat> You have this, the tallest people in Scandinavia, there's have no idea why that would be. These people should be the average size of everybody else in the planet, but we know here on this channel that these people have the genes of the giants in them. Simple as that. Okay. It's interesting in this article here in Wikipedia, nowhere in the article is it mentioned that Gorm the Old was a giant. Is that anywhere in here? I just read the whole thing to you. Not mentioned at all. Okay. Well, why wouldn't they mention that? Why, you know, why keep us from knowing that? Okay, why keep anybody from knowing that? What is the, you know, what's the purpose of that? Okay, just got it from the list over here, right? List of giants in mythology and folklore. Gorm, right? No mention at all of him being a giant. And he was languid. Okay, so he was languid. Okay, so let's say, for example, okay, so you have to think about these things, folks, based on all the stuff we talked about. We talked about gigantism. We talked about acromegaly. Okay, we talk about the expression of the giant genes in people. In some cases, it doesn't work out so well, and these people having these incredible health problems and all this stuff and don't seem to be, you know, pillars of health in any way. Okay, but then you have people like Drew McIntyre, okay, which is, you know, pretty much has everything of the Giants in him, okay. He's got all the dominant alleles, okay. There's no recessive stuff there for him or whatever. It's just full expression of Giant, okay. His head is just his proportion to his body as it could ever be. For anybody, okay, this is obviously not suffering from gigantism, but let's say Gorm here, because he was languid, okay, so which means he's sort of lazy and slow, all right, maybe Gorm here was um, suffering from gigantism or acromegaly or something like that, probably not acromegaly, but more gigantism, perhaps he was one of these giant hybrids that 
could not fully express itself, okay? And that's why he was languid. It could be. I'm just saying you have to think about these things a little bit deeper, okay, than these people do because they don't believe that. There's, nobody has genes of giants in it because the giants didn't exist, right? So, hmm, really? Stop listening to the bullshit, folks. It's just bullshit, okay? They don't know what they're talking about, and we do here on this channel. We're all experts at this. We know what we're talking about, okay? So, he's the reported son of semi-legendary. What the hell does semi-legendary mean? Is he a legend or not, okay? And when you look further into it about this King Arthur nut, you know, it's the semi-mythological. His father was semi-mythological. What's that, semi-mythological? You know, can't you make up your mind? Okay, so... We're going to talk about these gelling stones here in a minute here and get a look at them. But this time of person who was his wife, the queen here, that made this um, Danaberg wall, supposedly built this wall. But it says right here um, that it was um, the wall was not new. OK, so the wall was not new. Okay, so somebody else made the wall, okay, and also um, this guy raised the mound, okay, so he built on top of a mound that was already there, okay, so he's the Danaberg, um, okay. Go there for a second and take a look at that. Okay, so here's the Danaper wall. And here's what it looks like. Okay, it was existing before. Now you could come here to the Americas and see a wall that looks just exactly like this. Okay, so. And knowing what we know about the Danish people here. And we know whatever they're leaving out here about uh, Gorm here. That he's a giant, okay. We have his wife here building walls, okay. So a giant building earthen walls, a giant Tess building earthen walls, evidence of it, okay. Raising mounds, okay. So he's building on top of another mound, another culture previous to him being there, although they were giants too, but the mounds from a people much further in the past. And again, who was around there? Okay, you see this? Denmark right here? The Bell Beaker people. Okay. Bronze Age mounds that Gorm built on top of. And you're telling me while he did this, he didn't excavate it and take out what was in it. All right. So, and this whole thing about the skeleton and everything, well, if he was a giant guy and all that kind of stuff, where's his measurements here, okay? You're referring back from your own article here, right? About the myths of the giants, you know, there's no mention of giant and no mention about the measurements of the skeleton and all this kind of stuff. So, all this sort of secret hidden stuff they're keeping from us because they don't want to get our heads too big or anything like that. Okay, so what are these gelling stone things that are there? Okay, so it's very interesting. These stones are found near these mounds. Okay, the gelling mounds. We'll talk about the gelling stone shit, but the gelling monuments, okay, here's an old, um, photograph of that. So, here's the gelling mounds right here, an old illustration of the joke. So, here's, here's a photo, an aerial photo of the gelling mounds there, these royal mounds, supposedly, that were raised by this Gorm character who was a giant, 
okay but you see them being leveled off here but look what's going on with this one here okay there's another stone on top of it here something else was going on here so all weathered here but uh, I couldn't get a good look at what this is being said written in a different language whatever so apparently the mounts looked a little bit different in the past than they do now okay like this all right so built on a on top of a bra bronze age mound all right so what else is interesting about these things here here's one of the stones that they claim that were raised these monuments were raised you know erected for these people and the runic was put on these stones all right so you got mounds and you got these large stones near the mounds all right these rather large stones see here they are here's a picture of them they have all this sort of runic on it and everything okay and go on and it's a beautiful illustration here you know relief carved into the stell here i guess that's what it is okay so here's the mound in the background here and here are these giant megalithic size stones with the runic on it and this okay so you also have what they call the gelling stone ship okay which is this huge ship that's built under these mounds okay so let me read to you about the gelling stone ship Okay, the Jelling Stone ship is a stone ship, the longest known to have existed, remains of which lie under the two royal barrows at Jelling, Denmark. The Jelling ship was formerly thought to have extended between the two mounds and, and been 170 70 meters, 560 feet long, by far the longest stone ship discovered. However, recent archaeological research and the re-evaluation of large pits on the west side of the North Mound, which were noted in the 19th 1960s has led to a, to a different reconstruction in which the ship had the had the north mound as its center rather than its stern and was 354 meters 1161 feet long this length corresponds to 1200 roman feet and the trelleborg fortresses were also measured out in roman feet King Harold Bluetooth erected a great mound, the largest burial mound in Denmark, over an existing Bronze Age burial mound at Jelling. Okay, so this main story here is about Gorm and his son Harold here, and you know, the beginnings of Denmark and all this kind of stuff like that. But take into account that it was built over an already existing Bronze Age mound. Okay, no mention of the culture at all associated with the Bronze Age man, as if it was not any sort of relevant information in this article here about Gorm the Old, Gorm the Languid. You know, he could have been suffering from uh, what I call gravity sickness, too, that these giants were incompatible. That especially the fully expressed ones, the ones with the, you know, most giant DNA and I'm still hybrids, but, you know, deteriorating as the gravity was still leveling out. And I think it took all the time into the 1800s, maybe even the beginning of the 20th century for gravity to level out because there were changes in the physics of light and gravity at those times as reported by Rupert Sheldrake. Okay, so didn't level out. Something happened to it and leveled out finally. And that's why we stopped growing and everything else. Okay, so. All right, so you have this gelling stone ship. All right, so. <clears throat> later to the south of it, he raised an even higher empty mound. Okay, an empty mound. So it was excavated by this Gorm the Old, Harold Bluetooth, his son. 
okay, how Bluetooth speaker is done, okay, raise it an even higher empty mount. So empty mount was a mound with nothing in it because they, you know, excavated it to see if there was anything in it. So they found an empty mound with nothing in it. So a mound with nothing in it. Not every mound is a burial mound, okay? And who were making mounds there in Europe, okay, during the Bronze Age? Well, who? We know who. Okay, the Bell Beaker culture, you dope. Okay, see Denmark there? Bell Beaker culture. No mention of it in the article about Gorm, in this article about the ship. and everything. No mention of it. Just Bronze Age burial mound. By Bronze Age burial mound, who made that Bronze Age burial mound? Well, we're leaving that out here because you don't need to know that. Okay. The giant Bell Beaker people who were there. And whatever other humanoids were there in the past along with them, sort of like what was going on in North America at the time. All right. So, so probably a whole northern, uh, one unified, uh, you know, society um, in the northern hemisphere from Europe to North America all at the same time. And they have all the dates wrong, which all the ones in the New World are newer. You know, they're always newer. They got to be newer. If, you know, can't be at the same time as the Bell Beaker people. No, no, no. There's a tiny little overlap there, but mm, uh uh. Okay, because it's the new world. New, new, new. Okay, because we say it so, even though it isn't. By every factor of, you know, the research that's been done on this channel about it. All right, so. We just heard about the Bronze Age burial mound and no mention of the people who put that Bronze Age burial mound there and who were there before these people. Okay, so these mounds were there, probably hearkening back to a way distant past. By the time these people came along, who were still giant people, okay, the tall Danes there, and Gorm was a giant. That's what they say, right? Okay, so these people had no idea of the Bronze Age people that were there that left their legacy there through interbreeding with all the regular people there, okay? And could King Gorm have been suffering from, you know, gigantism unlike Drew McIntyre, okay? A real giant that exists today. Drew McIntyre, with all the giant genes in him. I hate to tell you, but that's the truth. All right, so. Leaders in South he raised an even higher empty mound, which a rune stone raised by Gorm describes as the grave of Harold's mother, Queen Thyra. One end of the stone ship is reserved under this southern mound. Between the two mounds, Harold placed a larger rune stone in memory of both his parents, and a smaller stone now stands beside it. The two stones are now in the churchyard on the south side of Jelling Church, the fourth church to occupy the site south of the north mound. Still during the 10th century, Gorm's body was moved from the north mound which now contains only the grave goods to a grave under the church the triangle of stones under the south mound was previously thought to have enclosed a heathen temple and the rune stone to tyra but when the base of the south mound was opened in 1992 in connection with work on a road the lines were found to be slightly curved and traces of the other end of the ship were then found under the north mound also Dendrochronological evidence states the building up of the North Mound and the creation of the new burial chamber within it to 958-59 CE, coinciding with Gorm's death that winter and the creation of the South Mound to approximately 970. <coughs> the lichen on <coughs> the ship stones which were covered by the South Line suggests that by then they had stood in the open for some 20 to 30 years. However, if the ship setting was centered on a north mound, then it post-dates it. Okay, so they don't know the actual dating of the thing. 
And as far as the lichen build up on a stone from some twenty to thirty years, that doesn't matter. It could that could take place in in any time period. Just that it was exposed for twenty to thirty years and lichen built up on it at some time in the past, and that's what they can discern from it. Not actual radiocarbon dating of the lichen, if there should be any such thing. But okay, so. They don't know the date of it and everything, so just keep that in mind. The ruined stone to Thyra, which whose original position is unknown, may have been associated with the ship, perhaps forming its prow. In which case, it would have been part of Gorm's monument to his queen. There is also a stone ship associated. Okay, so listen to this. There is also a stone ship associated with a Bronze Age burial mound at Back where a rune stone was raised by two son of Robin to his Trutnik to his Trutnik Thyra, claiming that two raised Thyra's mound. Okay, so this is a whole different thing going on here, but this is a Bronze Age burial mound. Okay, a stone ship associated with a Bronze Age burial mound. So the stone ship wasn't built by any of these people. In the 900s there. It was built in the Bronze Age. Okay. This giant ship. Built there. Okay. At Jelling. At the Jelling Mounds. Like this Bronze Age burial mound. Ship associated with the Bronze Age burial mound. It's from the Bronze Age. They didn't put the ship there. Right. These people that they're talking about. Gorm. And Harold, Bluetooth speaker, and all this, they didn't do it, right? It's done during the Bronze Age, okay? A recent suggestion is that Tyler was married first to Gorm and then to Two, and that the mounds and ships represent rival claims to her lands on the part of Two and Harold. This would explain the raising of an empty mound and the prominent rune stone between the two gelling mounds, in which Harold refers to both his parents. Okay, so a couple of things about this. All right, and I've read some other things here. Here's some, like, uh, official about the necropolis here. Again, no mention of giants or anything. Here's some of the other rune stones that are found there. Okay, so, and it, artifacts found there, which is hardly surprising because it seemed that they excavated the mounds there before they started raising them to different levels. All right, so what do we know about stones such as these. I mean, obviously, you have people capable of this level of carving, okay, and ability to carve stone this way and everything are just taking these random rocks, these random giant boulder stones, and saying, okay, this one looks good. Let's put this you know, artwork on here, and let's put these runes on here to tell a story about all these things, and supposedly they were raised, uh, usage of the term again, to raise these stones, to put this artwork on them, but who's building mounds, okay, so they added to the mounds, okay, let me suggest this here, what do we know about, um, Neolithic structures in Denmark, well, there's quite a few of them, okay, all sorts of Neolithic things going on, you should maybe talk about these things sometime later on here, so a whole bunch of Neolithic things going on there, so let me suggest this to you, okay, that these stones were already there with the old Bronze Age mounds that were already there. Nobody raised them or anything. They were already there, okay? And these people put these inscriptions and these artwork on them, okay? They know it was a sacred place of their ancestors or whatever it is, okay? Again, this is the this history of Denmark here that we're looking at. Okay, do you think they might be stretching things or leaving things out or, you know, that we don't want to talk about here, right? Or all these other concomitant type facts and whatnot, the tallest people in Scandinavia, giants left out of the main point of the whole thing. I mean, I got the link from their list, 
But yet nowhere in this article is he mentioned that this guy is a giant. They got his skeleton and all this kind of stuff. Well, did they measure it out? Did they take a look at it? Did they see why he was languid here? Why won't they dig this guy up and say he has gigantism or whatever it is? Okay, he's not a Drew McIntyre. Okay, because he, he drew up, you know, Doug up something like Drew McIntyre, and I'm going to say that he has gigantism. But, you know, knowing them, you know, they, they dug up many skeletons like Drew McIntyre and said exactly that. It's got to be gigantism just because nobody could be that big. It has to be some physical anomaly occurring in these people just everywhere. It's super, super rare, but it's just occurring everywhere. <laughs> you know, like they would probably say these jelly people, even knowing what we know, right? Tallest people in Scandinavia, no explanation, right? The Frisians, no explanation. Just uh, whatever, you know, no explanation. Well, what if, you know, they have giants? He said, no, no, he said giants. He said giants, mommy, giants. Okay, so look, let's not kid ourselves about it. Who is kicking around over here? The Bell Beaver culture, we know all about. People of large stature with vaulted craniums, blah, 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 blah. We already know it ad nauseum, all right? So we know who's making mounts here in those times. And there's plenty of Neolithic structures around there, okay? So most likely this cockamamie story about Gorm the Old and the gelling, you know, stones and mounts and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so it's just more evidence of a culture building on top of some previous culture, okay? Here we have history being told to us with no mention of the previous culture and who they were as if it's not important to this at all, okay? You're building on top of somebody else's man from the past, okay? No mention of it? Really, okay? So why, all right? And the most probable thing is that these stones were already there, already standing in these places, wherever they were. Looks like some of them, to me anyway, were uh, standing, um, and one of them at least is standing on top of the mound. Okay, but now the mounds are flat. Wasn't that nice of them to do? Oh, this is our historic place. Yeah, level them out on top. Yeah, get rid of that stuff. Take that stone down from there. You know, yay, history. We're so grateful. You know, let's wreck this place and, you know, whatever. So, look, I don't think that anybody raised any stones. And it's a good possibility that nobody raised any mounds, too. Because if you're making mounds, you better know how to make them. Okay. And it seems that the people who originally built mounds knew this, but how would people who were building mounds later on understand that you need to build it with engineered soil? You just can't plop dirt on top of it because it doesn't last. It gets washed away, right? So either Harold Bluetooth speaker there knew how to engineer soil to build mounds with, but they were just already there. And this whole thing about him raising the mouse and all this kind of stuff. All he did was go into them, dig out what was either in there or not in there. One apparently was a very old man, probably. They kicked out whoever was in there. And they built a new wooden structure in there, the house, whoever was going to be in there, which was raided later on, apparently, according to their, on their official website there. And all the goods and everything, the body and everything taken from it. But, you know... They're going into these mounds. They went in there probably to find treasure or whatever it is and decided, hey, this is a good place to bury my dirty ass right in here. Even though I didn't build a mound, just claim I did. See, I built these mounds, right? Yeah, sure, boss. Whatever you say, you built them, all right. So I don't think these stones and everything were, have anything to do with Gorm or anything like that, but have more to do with the Bronze Age culture that was there in previously. That probably Gorm and the rest of the people we're talking about here didn't know anything about, but somehow came to you know be associated with these things, like his wife there, okay. And even if it's true, we have legends of giants here or 
semi legends or whatever the heck they're talking about semi legends okay of ladies building walls which happens to be like 19 miles long this danberg wall she built this wall okay that was previously there you know she's credited with it but just saying that the wall was previous there's a wall previously there to even this person died you know, associated with, you know, building the wall here. So, the whole thing is all propaganda, heist and everything. You know it is. It has to do with the history of these people in Denmark and everything. You're not going to say anything bad about it or introduce any other characters in here, like the Bronze Age people who were there before them, or giants to say anything about giants. So what? We're tall. We're not giants. See, people don't like to be called giants. Like tall people, they don't really like to be called giants, okay? Because a lot of tall people, the reason why they're all hunched over is because they want to be down with us, average size people. My friend Ed and I used to hang out, go to clubs when we were young guys and whatnot. He's six foot five. Okay, he's always like slumped over, like trying to be down with the rest of the, everybody, whatever. And I used to tell him, stand up straight, man. You know, be proud of your tallness there and everything. But they're not. They just feel like odd. They feel odd. A lot of tall people do. Some, some do. Okay, I can't say for a lot, but some do. I know my friend Ed was one of those kind of people, you know, it's just, you know, for them, you know, just seeming tall and gorky and all that kind of stuff like that is, sort of, you know, negative sort of thing. So you see how it is, but, you know, that's leftover propaganda from our, you know, sort of, you know, uh, ethnocentric type behavior and, you know, xenophobic type behavior that, you know, it's just inherent in everybody. I think they, Psychology, I read in psychology today, you did some sort of study or whatever, and everybody's born with a sort of xenophobia. It's just this part of survival strategy, that's all. Because at one time, there's all kinds of humanoids wandering around, or some of them are hostile, okay? But probably the further back in time you go to the more advanced, technologically advanced civilizations of the ancient, ancient, ancient past, Okay, all these people are around getting along with each other and genetically enhancing themselves, like in the comic book, The Airplasm. Okay, with all these biologically enhanced things they could do to themselves and all this kind of stuff. And they were doing that in the past. Obviously, corn is a perfect example, and probably a lot of the vegetables and plants and all these domestic animals are all bioengineered by some ancient, more advanced culture in which giants were heavily involved with, obviously. Okay, seems like their cultures are passed down from the ancient past to me, based on the research done on the channel. And I'm sure here it is again. Okay, but the story in Europe is like a totally different story. But let's say this story about Gorm, okay, here represents somebody of giant stature, one of these hybrid people, even though maybe he's just a gigantism guy because he's all languid and everything, or perhaps suffering from gravity sickness or whatever. And. You know, perhaps, you know, he's, uh, you know, one of these hybrid giants, you know. So, look, you know, I don't think that the story is untrue. It could be that these people were giant-sized people based on what we know about the people in Denmark, okay, and the Frisians who live nearby, and all this related type material that's not mentioned in any of these articles, right? But we're putting together here through the research that I've done for you, okay? Looking at all these things, this stone ship that's 1,161 feet long, okay? Let me throw this at you, okay? That the people in the far ancient past, these people in the Bronze Age, the Bell Beaker people, whoever was there, whatever humanoids were there, whatever, were building these giant boats to fit their giant bodies, okay, and sailing all over the oceans of the planet, okay, and going everywhere, long before Columbus or even the Phoenicians or anybody made the trip, okay, building giant boats to sail on the ocean, okay, thousand feet long, it's huge, absolutely huge, 
talking like the Syracuse length is like the size of the Queen Mary, a wooden vessel, okay? That later be renamed the Alexandria and moored in the harbor there at Alexandria as a gift to Ptolemy from, you know, from uh, the Greece there, right? I just so happen to have a big giant library and reading room on it. Hmm, isn't that interesting? And Caesar burnt all the boats in the harbor there at Alexandria when he attacked Alexandria. Hmm. Burning libraries on the on the water on a decommissioned ship that had corn on board. Corn, thousand years before Columbus reached the Americas. Corn. All right, so this giant ship. Okay, so you know what are these giant people sailing all over the planet? Well, most likely yes. All right, and this whole cockamamie story about Gorm and these jelly stones and these mounds, just a bunch of stories. Nobody raised any stones or mounds. All they did was carve the decorations into them or whatever. You have this level of art in stone and everything else where these people who cut themselves perfectly square blocks as monuments or whatever, but hey, they were already there by the Bronze people, Bronze Age people who erected them there. Okay. No need to do anything. Or bring stones from anywhere or anything. Especially if you're a languid. Alright. All you got to do is use the ones that are there. Okay. And carve them all up. And carve a bunch of runes in them. And stuff like that. And hey. Just adapt the site as your own. Which is done. And we discussed this. And Charles C. Mann discussed this. But it was done like. Thousands and thousands of times all over this planet. So one civilization comes across the ruins of an old civilization. They build right on top of it. Now who's his what's his where's? You know? Okay, so all I know is that the Bell Beaker people are the people who built bell-shaped mounds. Okay? And were large people. In the 2400 BC range. Okay. And they're right up here in Denmark. Okay. Where it just so happens that the tallest people in Scandinavia are for some unknown reason. Unknown reason. Okay. No unknown reason. We know why. They got the genes of the giants in them that were haven't been spoiled yet by intermingling with the rest of the Homo sapiens species. Okay, but they're working on it. So, you know, before anybody comes to that realization, even though we've come to it on this channel, that these people have the genes of the giants in them. Okay? And true Magatari should be proud. He's got the genes of the giants in him that have expressed themselves like nearly 100%. He's on that end of the spectrum, okay? The people with gigantism and perhaps even acromegaly. Well, the acromegaly ones are completely different humanoid giant species altogether that are expressing themselves in human beings, okay? Whereas the magnetized is a, a different one, perhaps to both the Ukrainian people, okay? The Bell Beaker people, he's an expression of them, okay? Because a lot of the researchers who looked at the skeletal remains of the giants from out here in America said these people must have been, some of them with the big, big bones, must have been real powerful characters, okay? Like this guy right here, all right? So anyway, guys, this is the story of Gorm. This is one of these legends of giants or whatever, you know, it isn't said here in this article for some reason. Okay, no mention of the Bronze Age burial matters built his mound of supposedly on or excavated and put his own burial chamber in there or whatever of a mound that didn't have anything in one of these bell mounds. Okay, no mention of the Bell Beaker period for some reason. Okay, as if it doesn't matter. All right, but it does. Okay, to our full understanding of what's going on now and in the past. All right. With the Frisian people just so happen to be right over here. Okay? So you can stand on a milk crate while you take a leak in the men's room there. Because you're going to need it. Even if you're like six foot high. You're still a shorty. 
compared to them, shorty. Okay? So, anyway, guys, this is the real story here, okay? We can use our knowledge of the Giants to figure these things out and ask the right questions and perhaps speculate more precisely on these things than anybody else, okay? There's no cannibalism here or anything like that, okay? We're trying to take a look at this thing, okay, under a microscope and see what's really being said or what perhaps is really going on, okay? This guy Gorm and Dyra here who are building walls and other things and whatever, perhaps were not from the time period they suggest, or even if they were from the time period they suggest, these people are supposed giants, Okay, well, where's the mention of them? Okay, so things we should know, things that we understand, okay, things they're, you know, omitting here for some reason. We have to think about those things and why, all right? These people are giants. They don't like to say it. <clears throat> and here's the, you know, ancestral peoples here of Denmark here where probably these Bell Beaker people and these, you know, these people who are, Probably a thousand years later, you know, the ancestors of the Bell Beaker people, but because of all the catastrophes and war and everything else that goes on and through the past and everything, they had no idea of their real ancestry. And besides the fact that every ruler changes the history to suit whatever needs they have to control the people with a phony baloney history, and it's just like they do today. Your history, my history, I don't care where you come from in this world. It's all bullshit, folks. All bullshit. All biased bullshit. There can't be any truth in it. Without that, can't make sense of reality. Just as simple as that. All right, guys. Anyway, I thought you might be interested in hearing about the Legends of the Giants and other places here. Of course, you know, again, I have to cherry pick all these things. Most of them have to do with astral bodies and whatnot. But there are some like these that we can actually break down and sort of discern things that are going on. And I say that this guy Gorm, the old, and these gelling stones, walls, mounds were already there. And just claiming them for their own. They fit nicely with the story at the beginning of Denmark here. They carved up these stones that are already standing there and claim the whole site for their own because you know who's going to challenge them okay so anyway guys if you like the video please do hit the like button and if you're not a subscriber please do subscribe because we're going to look at things the way they should be looked at all right based on our extensive knowledge about the giants at this point or watching all the videos on this channel we know everything about the giant peoples of the past, okay, so far. And we're learning more from legends like this, okay, and the truths they have to really, you know, reveal about the ancient past and what was actually going on, okay. And not all this cockamamie crap they're going to hand you some propaganda story because they have a vested interest in it, obviously. All right, guys, anyway. Hit the like and Bug Cat Seven signing out. Peace.